because we had the little boy, right? And, he, you know, I've done a lot of childcare with him. And uh, it's quite hard, the childcare, because my wife's very middle class. He's quite an organic little boy. You know, everything's checked and double checked. So she goes out, she goes, there's some activities on the side. And I've left him some organic raisins. <laughs> oh, lovely. Well done. <laughs> we'll crack on with that. <laughs> and when she goes out, I say to him, go and get yourself two fingers of Kit Kat. <laughs> and a little glass of orange juice. I say, don't water it down. <laughs> when he comes back, we put on ITV4 and we watch on the buses together. Because <laughs> I want him to know where he comes from. <laughs> he loves it. He loves a bit of on the buses. But he's got no concept of dishonesty. So I say to him after, don't say nothing to mummy about the bus programme and the Kit Kat and that. And he goes, nah, nah, I won't say nothing to He's walked in the kitchen the other day. Bold as brass, walked in the kitchen. <laughs> Looked at the wife. Hey, yeah. They said it couldn't happen, people. They said a comedian could not get a laugh from Blakey in 2011. <laughs> you saw it here, people. You were part of history. <laughs> Gotta keep him alive, Blakey. So me and the wife love each other, but she gets a bit upset about my immaturity. She says, is you immature? She says, you're peeping out the curtains. You're showing people your cock. You don't say hello to no one. <laughs> this grown-up bit quite hard to deal with. I'm not a monster, but I want to have a laugh. And that adult life is so dull, isn't it? So she goes out, and I'm walking about and I'm like, what's going on here? And the phone goes. And every fibre in my being tells me everything I know to be right and wrong informs me. I must not answer that phone like a Chinese man. <laughs> But in some mind your language corridor of my mind, <laughs> some Benny Hill room where the door is never quite closed properly, <laughs> I think that'll be a laugh. <laughs> Answer the phone like a Chinese person. <laughs> and I can feel myself doing it. I'm having an out of body experience. I'm floating above myself. Don't do it, I'll say. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a breakaway conversation for authenticity. Ting tang ying yao ma. Ting tang tang ying yao ma. No, she goes ba ba. <laughs> she like a pampering, innit? Ta ta. <laughs> My wife comes home, she says, what are you doing? She says, why are people in work asking me if I'm married to a Japanese man? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's because I'm an asshole. <laughs> so she said, we need to talk. I thought, oh, here we go. Now, when I was at university, I read philosophy for a year, and I read Kierkegaard. He's a Danish philosopher. He believes we live our lives moving forward, understanding by looking back. Because living a life and understanding it occupies separate dimensions, because your experiences always overwhelm you before they can be processed. <laughs> so, I rejigged some Kierkegaard on her. I thought, I've got to put this to bed. I want to listen to Desert Island This have a cup of coffee. <laughs> I turned to her and said, listen, sister, <laughs> listen, I think you'll find the people who take the longest to grow up on this planet ultimately end up the finest adults, all right? Job done. <laughs> I turn away, enjoying the victory. She's on the ropes. That was good. She's thinking, that was good. The kitchen windows only missed it up. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I just had to draw a cock on it. <laughs> And to show her I was trying, I didn't put any spunk coming out of the top. <laughs> are you out or were you out? <laughs>